Hey guys, so it's been about a week or so since I last spoke about the frustrating USB disconnection issue which is affecting a large percentage of AMD motherboards such as this Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. What I'd like to do today is talk about C states and I'd like to talk about whether disabling C states in your BIOS will resolve this problem. I'd also like to touch upon the responses that I've had from Gigabyte and from ARIA PC, which is where I bought this motherboard. So to bring you up to speed, I've published two videos about this issue already. In the first video, I detailed the problem. I detailed what was happening with me. And I pointed out the fact that you can resolve this issue by dropping your PCI Express down from Auto or Gen 4 down to Gen 3. But that does mean that if you've got a Gen 4 SSD, like I do, your read and write speeds will drop from like 6,000 megabytes per second down to like 2,000, 2,500. So it's not ideal. Your SSD effectively becomes an SSD that's less than half the cost. In my second video, I talked about the fact that AMD have acknowledged the issue and they're reaching out to their customers, all of you who have AMD motherboards, and they're asking for all of us to provide them with feedback so that they can help troubleshoot the configuration and see what's going on here. So. I do appreciate that they are doing this, but I'm not going to say they're late to the game, but this was going on for a long time before they've even stepped up and said that there is an issue. And you will maybe have seen some updates to the BIOS and maybe to drivers, etc. already. Certainly I saw some uh, Reddit discussions, you know, from Asus and different companies. The one that we've got from Gigabyte here for my board didn't fix anything. In fact, it seems to have made it a little bit noisier, just the buzzing sound. But most of these updates seem to have been for the AMD Agessa Combo V2 rollout. So it doesn't seem to have fixed this problem. Maybe it's fixed it for you, but certainly for me, I am still having major problems. And as a major problem, I mean, the main way to connect to your computer, apart from Bluetooth, is USB. And that's how you connect your hard drives. It's how you connect your webcams, your cameras, your headsets, lots of different things. And when the USB connection keeps disconnecting, it just makes it impractical. And for me, that meant that I couldn't record videos, which is what I do through my PC. So I would been look, I've been looking at comments the last few days from you guys, and without being too cheesy for a YouTuber, I do appreciate all the comments that you guys have, uh, have left so far. And you know, a few of you have said, thanks for covering this subject, but it does go two ways. I'm trying to get a resolution to this as well. And a lot of you guys, I've been giving some really good feedback about this issue. You've told me what you've tried and what you haven't tried. And one such comment was left today, and it was regarding C states. And it came from Zemex. <laughs> I apologize if that's not how you pronounce it. Actually, Hardcore Overclocking, which is a really good YouTube channel, says, did some tests and he discovered that if you disable C states in your BIOS, your USB ports will work fine and you will still be able to run Gen 4 PCI Express. Now, my response was that I thought I had tried this already, but then I started thinking about it and I hadn't. I thought I had because I ran through a lot of different guides and recommendations a few weeks ago, but it's not something that I had tested. So it was something that I wanted to test today. And today I've spent four or five hours, four or five hours, I would say, uh, kind of troubleshooting this issue. So I'm going to leave it to Microsoft and Dell to explain what a C state is. I've got a very basic understanding of it. Microsoft say that C states are states when the CPU has reduced or turned off selected functions. I don't really like their, exp I mean, their explanation is correct, but I think the Dell page here is a little bit better. They say that in order to save energy when the CPU is idle, you can command the CPU to enter a low power mode. Each CPU has several power modes, which are collectively called C states or C modes. In this article, we explain what these modes are, what they do, and which processors support which modes. Now, this was kind of what I had as an understanding of what C states were, because I've did overclocking before. I'm sure many of you have did overclocking before, but like many of you, when I did overclocking, I just followed the guides from people that were, you know, more experienced in this area. So I have disabled C states and messed around with C states in the past, but it really was me watching a YouTube tutorial where it says disable this, enable this, increase this value, decrease this value. So yes, I've changed the C state value before. I had a broad understanding of what it did, but I'm not an expert on this subject by any means. 
But if you look at this article, and I'll link to all these pages down below in the, in the description area, as normal. But you can see all the different states, and it goes from C0, C1, C1E, all the way up to C6. And you can see here that C0 means that the CPU is fully turned on. You've got C2 stop clock, stops the CPU internal and external clocks via hardware. And then you've got C2E, extended stop grant. Now, all of these things will save you electricity and, you know, make your computer or your laptop, whatever, your desktop or laptop, it should make them run more efficiently. And they're there to help you. You can see here, reduces CPU voltage, etc. So that really is what the C states does. You know, it, it helps your computer run more efficiently. That's the best way to look at it. So I hadn't disabled that before. So I went back into my BIOS and it was set at auto. It's called global C state control or something like that. And I changed it to disabled and then I loaded my computer back up. And I went back and I re-enabled it later on in the day. And I've been switching between both modes today, doing lots of tests to work out whether C states does actually help the issue. So does it help the issue? Does it resolve this problem? For me, no. For me, no. But there is a chance this may actually work for you and it might work for other people. So everyone's got a different test. Everyone's got a different test as to how you troubleshoot the issue and how you see whether it's working or not. Now, because I'm plugging in a few different cameras, I'm sending a lot of bandwidth to the computer. You know, it's coming from the, uh, this camera, the overhead camera, etc. So my requirements are maybe a little bit higher than someone is just connecting, say, an audio interface or a wireless headset. I'm sending more, you know, more information there. So my test today, once I disabled uh, C states, was to put this camera on, plugged everything to my computer. All the USB cables uh, for the cameras were not going through the Thunderbolt hub anymore. They were going through the computer. And I checked the main camera. I checked this uh, overhead camera here. And I also plugged in, not this webcam because the cable doesn't stretch, but I did plug in this webcam over here. And you can see here, this is the PC. Now, right now, these cameras have been taken away. I've just got like the Stream Deck and a few other kind of like keyboards, etc. plugged in. But previously, I had all of the cameras going through here, but they're now running through my Thunderbolt 3 hub. But that was the test that I did today. I was basically switching on OBS and I was putting on all my cameras and I was seeing what was happening. And I was pleased. It was working. It was working. And I started recording. I recorded a 10 minute video. And then, you know, I was switching between all the cameras and I was doing lots of tests. I did this back and forth for a few hours and I went back to the other state and, you know, I re enabled. Uh, C states and then I disabled them again. I've spent most of the day doing this and initially it was working and then at one point it wasn't working again. And this is kind of what happened initially when I faced this issue where I could record for like 10 minutes or so and then it just stops and then the cameras don't work and it's just, you know, it's a, the image is frozen. Now I will say when I switch back and I switch the global C state to auto or enabled, I couldn't even get this camera working. Like these cameras, when connected to the computer, it was just, I'd be like this, frozen. I'd be frozen and you couldn't see anything. The image was frozen. So I had to put all these cameras back through the Thunderbolt 3 hub because it doesn't work when C states is enabled. But when I disable it, the cameras do work, but you're talking about they work for like 15 minutes. And then the same issue that I've had all along with the disconnects it comes up. Obviously, I can't have that. Now, I do encourage you all to try this fix, which Zemex and um, I forget the name right, actually Hardcore Overclocking, I'll leave a link to their channel as well. I do encourage you to, to try it for yourself. For what you're doing, if you're connecting maybe a hard drive or something else, or maybe a game controller, maybe if you're only doing something like, like this or a headset or something, maybe that's enough. And maybe that's enough, you know, just disabling the C states is enough to resolve the issue. You might be using a little bit more electricity, but it might resolve the issue for you. But for me, it didn't fix the situation. It really didn't fix the situation. So I'm glad that I tried it. It was something that I was looking forward to try to see if it worked, but it doesn't seem to be working for me, but we'll see what happens. Now, like I said, there has been BIOS updates and you know updates with the drivers, et cetera, recently. I noticed a kind of peculiar thing which I want to share with you all today. Um, 
And I'm not 100% sure if this is related to the BIOS or the app itself. I think this is maybe the, the latest BIOS update. It's, it's a minor thing, but I did notice if you look at the monitor here, um, I did notice that the eco mode has been removed from Oris EasyTune. I've only noticed this happening since I've updated to the latest version of the BIOS that Gigabyte have provided. So the eco mode has disappeared here. Now, this is not a mode that I used. I didn't put it onto eco mode. I just left it default for the majority of the time. I still want to kind of mess around with overclocking, but eco mode was a mode that always popped up when it's there. And it's kind of bizarre. I'm not sure why that has disappeared. My guess is that Gigabyte are kind of testing some things and maybe they've increased the voltage or something. And I don't know if I'm paranoid here of, you know, I've did so many tests over the last few weeks that it's hard to keep track of everything that I've done, but I definitely feel like there's a lot more buzzing coming from the motherboard. It's not a coil whine, it's like you would get from a graphics card. It's more just a, like an electrical buzz. It's, it's, it's very annoying and it's noticeable and it's noticeable, especially when I'm recording and I'm talking, etc. But I'm not sure if it's related to that at all. I'm really not sure. But what I did notice is that eco mode has uh, disappeared. But I checked the AMD Ryzen Master software. Now, you can use this with basic view, as you can see there. But it just shows you the temperature and uh, CPU clock speed, etc. But the advanced view gives you a lot more information. And if I change to this, it should pop up. There we go. So um, if I hide myself for a second, you can see what's up there. But Yes, this has got a lot of different things you can do. Now, I will say I have not changed anything as yet. The only thing I did do, and the one thing I did note is that there is an eco mode. Uh, oops, if I click on the right page, uh, there is an eco mode here. So the eco mode is not available in the Oris Easy Tune, uh, Tune app. So maybe that's just an issue with the app or with the Gigabyte uh, BIOS. But eco mode is available here. Uh, and there's lots of different modes here. So I switched the eco mode and then I switched it back on and I really didn't notice any difference if I'm honest. But this is an overclocking tool and it's a voltage reg regulation tool. It's something that you can you know mess around. You've got DRAM timings and all that there as well. But it was quite interesting to see that the eco mode is available here, but not in the, the Gigabyte, uh, Gigabyte app. And it was there before, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But I didn't mess any settings up there. I'm, I'm, I'm not changing anything overclocking, I'm not messing about with settings until, until I get this uh, issue resolved. So, like I said at the start of the video, I have reached out to Gigabyte and I have reached out to Aria PC, which is where I bought this motherboard. And the response from Gigabyte was poor. After a few days, they replied to me and I said to them in my email, listen, I've dropped down to Gen 3, but that's the only way I can resolve it and I've tried all this. And their response to me, despite telling them that I already know that you can drop down to Gen 3, their response to me was, just drop down to Gen 3. And, and that was annoying me because I had explained to them that there was an issue. There was an issue with the motherboard. It wasn't working. And their response to me was, yeah, just drop down to Gen 3. Never mind the fact that you've paid extra money for a Gen 4 board that's got Gen 4 across all the PCI Express slots, etc. Just drop it down to Gen 3. And that was annoying me. But I replied to them again. And by this point, AMD had acknowledged the issue. And then this time they acknowledged it and they said, hello, root cause has been analyzed and uh, reported to AMD, waiting for AMD's solution. Not the best response, I must, I must admit, you know, considering the fact how much I broke it down for them and explained what was going on. Um, and, I, and, I, and this is the thing, you know, I've touched upon this before, but it, you don't really know how good a company's support or warranty is until you actually report an issue to them. And then you kind of show their true colors. So yes, they've just said, basically, firstly, they've not looked at my email. They gave me a copy and paste response, but then they've just said, yeah, AMD are dealing with it. So they're kind of, I'm not going to say passing the buck, but they've just said, just wait for AMD to resolve the issue. So after my initial email where I explained exactly what was wrong with the motherboard, it took about two and a half weeks for ARIA PC to even reply. And even then, all they said was, has this issue since been resolved? Have you spoken to a member of our team? They were basically just assuming that the problem had went away. Now, I had called them a couple of days beforehand. I explained the issue again. I asked why no one had replied to my email. And they promised to get back to me the very next morning. And then it took about another week for them to reply to the email again. And they said, 
There are reported issues with B550 and X570 boards in regards to their USB functionality. I know, I told you a month ago. It's not uncommon for new boards to have these kinds of issues. However, they are usually resolved by subsequent BIOS updates. You will notice that many updates are coming out for these boards in an effort to fix these issues. So we recommend keeping your BIOS up to date. We believe it will be a matter of time before your own issue is resolved. Now, they have responded to the issue, but I must admit, after a few weeks, getting a response where they just say, hey, this happens. You know, there's always issues with the BIOS. It will be resolved later. It's a little bit disappointing, especially with the fact that this isn't a new board. You know, they're on, they're on version 33C of the BIOS. This isn't a new board. So it's not like this is a brand new product where they're rolling out new bug fixes. This should be a refined product. The X570, you know, AMD CPUs, uh, if the Ryzen chips have been out for a while. So it's a little bit disappointing that they've come out again and just said, hey, wait for AMD. And the reason I'm pointing out these responses is that for many of us, for many of us who are experiencing this issue, this is kind of all we can do right now. All we can do is wait for AMD and Gigabyte and ASUS and all these third party uh, companies to get their act together and actually release a fix for this. Now, the alternative is to RME the board, return the board, get a refund, and then jump over to the blue team. But Intel right now, certainly at the higher end of the CPUs, you know, if you're talking like the 5950X, which I've got, there's no real, well, there are alternatives to it in the Intel world, but they're not as good. And certainly I want the best CPU for my computer. So for me, switching over to Intel, I know they've got a lot of new CPUs coming out, but right now, as I'm recording this, switching over to Intel means that I'm going to have to switch to a CPU which isn't as good. It also means I have to sell the CPU and all that as well, you know, do the build again and all that. So it's quite frustrating, and most of us are, well, we continue to be in this situation where we're just playing the waiting game, and we're waiting for AMD to resolve this issue. And, yeah, that's all we can do right now. So just as a reminder, if you are experiencing this issue, dropping down to Gen 3 is probably the easiest fix for, it's the easiest solution for most of you, I think. Especially if you don't have a Gen 4 SSD, drop down to Gen 3 and then you're good to go. But if, like me, you have Gen 4 drives or graphics cards or whatever, and you want to use Gen 4, then you might want to try and disable C states. But failing that, you're going to have to use a Thunderbolt uh, adapter card, a Thunderbolt card in your computer, or a USB uh, card as well. And that's another suggestion which someone has made. Simply buy, if you don't want it, if you don't have a Thunderbolt 3 uh, connection, or you don't have the option of connecting a Thunderbolt card to your motherboard, you could just buy one of those network cards which has two, three, or four USB ports. And that should resolve the issue because it's not running through uh, the motherboard's uh, back panel. So I'll probably do another video about this soon guys because this is an issue which is not going away but at the moment not much else to say so give it a try guys try disabling c states it might work for you it didn't for me it is a little bit it does seem to be a little bit better but it does not seem to resolve the issue fully for me so i can't use it but yeah give it a try guys let me know what you think about it let me know if it works and i'll speak to you all in the next one take care